Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm greetings and to each and every one of you. How are you today? I knew this was gonna be a big surprise for you all. I hope you all more happy and of course more confident as well as before. Secondly, we would like to greet all of our special hosts. Hello, Miss Ilma and Miss Reisha, are you there? There it is. There it is. Okay. Would you like to greet uh, the audience before we start? Miss Reisha and Miss Ilma. Okay. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How was your day, participant? Before we start, let's open with our slogan: One teacher, one book, and one thing can change the world. Firstly, I am Reisha. Welcome back to International English Training Class Batch 5 by VLC Indonesia in collaboration with LDK Shahid U in Jakarta on our fifth day of our meeting. We really appreciate your first attending today's meeting and let's learn Arabic together. So, participant, this is really a good opportunity to learn as much knowledge about English and Arabic for an hour 30 minutes. And today, I'm with Sis Ilma as panel host from VLC Indonesia. Thank you, Miss Ray. Honestly, this is my great opportunity. Hi friends, I'm Ilma Hasana, student from Syarif Hidatullah Said Islamic University. Hello for all participants from Indonesia and special participants from abroad. I do hope that everything is okay today. By the way, guys, in today's meeting, there are three sessions. The first is opening remarks. The second is presentations from the speakers. And the last one is Q&A. Then what should we do the next, uh, Miss Ray? Thank you for asking. Now, I'm, I'm, I am going to read some rules before starting our first session. One, mute the microphone after the host, host let you speak. Two, keep the camera on. Three, three, rename with your nickname, underscore town, underscore Indonesia, or nickname, underscore, underscore country. Example, Taza, underscore Jakarta, underscore Indonesia, when you are from Indonesia. And example, and just underscore America, when you are from abroad. Okay, and number four is that you uh, and number four is that you can ask question in the chat room or click the right hand. Then you might ask directly in the Q and A session. And the last, there is an attendance list on the last ten minutes before we finish this program. There is an update attendance form. So for all participants who join us today and today. Please give mark or give a tick on the day you have joined with you Saturday and Sunday. For participants who joined today, please mark today's date. And for all participants, please type a screenshot you are joining this meeting today because later on, you will upload it when filling in your attendance form. So what next, Miss Ray? Okay, we recommend you to ask the background to part. You can get it from WhatsApp group. Now, let's move on to our main season, a presentation from Coach Seham. Please welcome Coach Seham. Okay, that's right. I cannot wait more for getting to know like and something new. Before that, I will read first about speaker's biography. Her name is Sehab Mahmoud. Uh, he is an Arabic teacher from Bangladesh. Okay, that's wonderful. Hello, Coach Seham. We can say that reading is a skill everyone so develop in daily life, but for some of us, English and Arabic is not our first language, and today is a great chance for us to learn from you, Coach Sehab, on how to master international phonetic alphabet in order to improve pronunciation. Maybe at the end, you can give us some strategies and techniques for improving our reading comprehension in English 
and English text as well. As uh, for teacher Nihab, are you ready for presenting your topic to all participants now? Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Please, time is yours. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bako, for inviting me here. Uh, and also, I am appreciating this program to the host and the co-host. I appreciate all of you and who are in this meeting. I'm super duper excited to be with you. And uh, I think that the guys you are joined already uh, that are most engaging and uh, and they they can do something in the future that I believe. Yeah, thank you so much. First of all, I need to uh, introduce myself. Before I introduce myself, I want to tell you guys that I have uh, quoted Apa kabarmu? <laughs> Orang Indo Apa kabarmu? Ya, yeah. Apa kabarmu? Kalian Orang Indonesia? Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself in Arabic so so that it can be engaging. And then uh, I will try to translate in English. I hope my English is not Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Uh, 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 Okay, that was the Arabic parts. I'm going to translate it so that you can understand about my introduction. Okay, this is Shihab Mahbub. I am from Bangladesh and uh, I am studying at a uh, studying at honors first year department of Al-Quran and Islamic studies in Islamic Arabic University, Bangladesh. I live in uh, in Pabna. The, the city name is Pabna in Bangladesh. And about, if I talk about my family, there are six family, six members in my family. Uh, they are my brother, sisters, and um, mother, uh, my uh, nephew. My, uh, my sister is bigger, older than me. And my, and my uh, brother is little uh, younger brother. He is studying at class eight, and I am like to uh, read, uh, read the uh, books. L I am really love to learn new languages like Arabic, English, and uh, uh, Hindi, Urdu. That's quite similar. That's what I like. Okay, that's about my introduction. Okay, I am um, requesting uh, or I am requesting to share my presentation. In that case, I need to share my screen. If you allow me to do this, I can start.
If anybody can let me know, you can you can see my screen. That can be good. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see. Thank you so much. Okay. Our topic is really great topic today. I'm really excited because this is the first time I am giving my uh, opportunity opinion about how why should we learn Arabic language because I have been uh, working in Arabic language since 2019 when COVID, COVID was coming in the, a worldwide and so on, spreading the worldwide so I thought I would sh I can share my knowledge to the people who really need it and then uh, that's how I proceeded the, my journey and then after sharing my knowledge people are really getting help by my sharing contents and then i started sharing arabic language and this is how i really got many inspiration from you guys a lot of you guys supported me to grow in arabic language and i have a big dream to spread the arabic language to all over the world that's my dream and i want to make the arabic language like as like as English, like everyone, if you can search it, if you can Google it, you can easily uh, find something, whatever you wanted. But if when when it when it comes to Arabic, you cannot get it. Uh, that is the disappoint that think that I am working on it. Yeah. So today's topic is li a little bit different that you haven't uh, uh, haven't uh, seen before. So this meeting can be life changing for you, inshallah. I hope so. So the topic is why should learn Arabic language? And uh, I will present it to you. This. Inshallah. Before that, it comes to introduction. I, I already gave you my introduction, but I can give you some here info information about Arabic language why actually we should learn Arabic language and it can be any language in this globalized world actually we have to learn uh, if we can learn a language a new language it can opens a new door to us if we can realize it perfectly because and it also uh, if you can learn a uh, something like Arabic language that can be much better much better that I believe so if I want to proceed uh, in this meeting, I will try to talk about the overview uh, of Arabic language that can be, uh, that I will talk about uh, uh, understanding Quran, like we are Muslim, right? So uh, as a Muslim, we will, tell, we, I, I will try to talk about why should we learn in order to understand Quran, Hadith, and, and etc., any other authentic books in Islam. And also, I will try to talk about opportunities of communication, uh, that how you can communicate with Arab people, the, the one who speaks Arabic, how you can communicate with them. And that will be opportunities to communicate with this Arabic language. I will try to talk about this meeting, inshallah. And also, it will come up to come to academic pursuits. Academics. Uh, some some of you might want to study abroad, like uh, like uh, Medina universities and some some highly highly um, universities to study abroad with uh, special languages. Uh, that is required Arabic language. I will talk about this. And also it will come to, I will talk about career opp opportunities. Why should you learn? Uh, why should you spend your valuable time to a, 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 to, to a language? And what would be benefit you in your career? That can be interesting point. And also it will, I will try to talk about, there is a confusion between in Arabic language, like there is, 
like um, in classical Arabic and then that comes dialects so people really get confused on it I will try to point it out figure it out so how so that you can uh, you cannot get confused anymore so by this by the end of this meeting inshallah you will get the overview of Arabic language and after that you can make a decision whether you should learn Arabic language or not so we can proceed Okay, it's uh, the topic is understanding the Quran. But before coming the understanding Quran, I actually, I actually want to remember you as as a Muslim in Islam, uh, it is obligation to, uh, to learn something like, uh, it can be anything, but we have it, it is obligation to learn, to read, to learn. But when it comes to learning something, that comes Arabic language. If you look at the Arab countries, if you look at the literature, if you look at the deep knowledge that actually works with the richest language. And Arabic is the language which is richest language in the world. And uh, this is how every literature, every deep knowledge written in, a, in Arabic language, like... Uh, <laughs> And also some great, uh, some richest language has in written, like Farsi, Persian is also has a richest language in the world. So it has been written a lot of poems, literature, deep knowledge. So this is why it's important to learn the Arabic language in order to understand, in order to learn something. After that, uh, as a Muslim, we got Holy Quran. We have a Holy Quran that is written in arabic you might be uh, you might be in, feel interested that why it is written in arabic language why why it is not in english why it is not in indonesian why it is not in bengali why it is not hindi or any other language why it is written in arabic the answer is so simple it's because our prophet Muhammad who has been revealed the quran what has been revealed to him he was Arab. So in Arab country, in Arab country, they, the people were speaking Arabic. And the, around the Arab, the circle, the environment of Arab, they were speaking in Arabic. So Allah, Allah revealed the Quran in Arabic language. But the Arabic language is not that very much in, uh, important here. The important thing is that what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is that we who is our creator that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to understand the Quran by the language of Arabic itself not any translation like uh, Arabic to English Arabic to any other language Allah wants us to understand to understand the Quran by Arabic language itself and, and it's because if you can understand it by itself by the language of Arabic it's much different and you cannot compare any language when you when it comes to translation hope you understand about this uh, about this uh, understanding quran and also it is uh, if i want to add something like in to verify something is it wrong is it correct right so we have to actually verify it and we cannot verify it by others' language, by translation. If you know the Arabic language, like uh, in our in our prayer, in our pray, like every day, every day we have obligation to pray five times a day. So in five times a day, we pray our salah uh, by Arabic language. But the matter of sorrow that most of us, most of us, we don't know how to actually what is saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is saying in our praying so what happened actually we cannot actually understand what is what is saying and what we are reading what our imam is reading so this is disappointed we are just we're just standing and then just uh, uh, nothing getting uh, we are not getting any uh, importance from the praying but when you are, when you know actually the arabic language you will feel it you can feel it how actually you, you you will feel that you are communicating with the with the creator 
what is it saying? Like Surah Al-Fatiha, you're reading and you are understanding what is saying. And uh, one by one, you are understanding each and every verses. So it becomes mysterious and you will feel it. You can feel that creator is talking with you. Unless you don't know the Arabic language, it is not possible. So this is why it is obligation to understand the Quran by learning Arabic language is good. And when it's talk, when it comes to hadith and then uh, authentic hadith, authentic uh, and Quran, also they these are written in Arabic. So in order to understand itself, if you can learn Arabic, you don't need to go for you know you don't need to go for Google. You don't need to go for any uh, dictionary, and you don't need to go for any uh, books. Any uh, uh, don't have to go again and again to the scholars. You can you can yourself understand everything. So why should you go anywhere else if you know things? So this is what I believe. If you can learn Arabic language in this point of view to understand the Quran, to understand the Hadith, to understand the Islam, our Islamic things, uh, when it comes to our religion, it's really important for us to learn the Arabic language. And as I told you, you cannot compare Arabic translations to any other language for example bismillah i hope you heard about it bismillah so bismillah actually um, means that with the name with the name of allah but actually what we mean here bismillah means i am starting i'm starting with the name of allah but where is the i'm starting in bismillah no right so this is why you need to understand the arabic language itself because it's hidden it's hidden that I'm starting in Bismillah. You can say, Aqra'u Bismillah. You can say, if you are going to eat something, you can say, Aqulu Bismillah, which means I am eating with the name of Allah. If you are to um, uh, study, uh, before, you can, uh, before you study, you can say, Adrusu Bismillah, which means I'm studying uh, with the name of Allah. And if you are... Uh, if you are writing something, before writing, you can say, Aktubu Bismillah, which means I'm writing with the name of Allah. So this is Arabic language which actually works. Not like, it, it, you cannot get these types of things by translations. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, can I know if you can hear me till I uh, when I started? then I can go again. Next page. Okay. Hope you can hear my voice. I hope so. There are 20 people here. Oh my goodness. I'm super happy that these 20 people are so engaging, can do something for future, near future, not many future, but near future, they can do something because they are engaging. They are really, um, I heard that People of Indonesia are so engaging uh, and uh, interesting about learning some new things. I heard that. I Yesterday, I was talking to a person in Indonesia from maybe Java. That is the city of Indonesia. He, they are talking about Indonesian people. Yeah. And then I learned Apakabarmu. Then how can I reply Saya Baik Baik Sadza? Like this. Okay. Hope you are enjoying. Opportunities for communication. Opportunities for communication. Okay. There's really great things you need to know about Arabic language. As I told you, Arabic language is like rich language. When I say rich language, what does it mean? Actually, like in Indonesia, I don't know. I'm just thinking. Uh, is kursi means is, is kursi do you know kursi in Indonesia kursi like where I am sitting where I am sitting this is called kursi hope you understand kursi I hope uh, Indonesian language is also called kursi and it is actually Arabic language kursi yun Arabic language that comes in Indonesia and, and do you know earth earth means the world earth that comes from Arabic language, which is Ardun. Ardun becomes Earth. 
and I forgot many of them, but many, many countries languages like we use Bangla language, you use Indonesian language, but you use most of language from Arabic. And this is why Arabic language is called rich language. Many words you are using from Arabic language. So this is why it is also good for communication and uh, it opens your door uh, to learn new language. If you want to learn new language, that will be helpful for uh, for you to learn that language easily and yeah uh, you know in Spanish in Spanish they used almost 4,000 Arabic words they used 4,000 Arabic words so this is why Arabic language is rich language and in order to communication oh my goodness fifth most spoken language in the world can you believe it English is most spoken. It's because it's international. It's it's obligations to learn it, to communicate with you because I am talking with you in English. Because it, it's obligation to communicate with you as you are from Indonesia. I am from Bangladesh, so we are different. In order to communicate, we have to learn a medium oh. language. In order to communicate, you have to learn a medium language. That is English. We have to must learn learn the English. But Arabic is also like international for the Muslim and for the high population. Like almost 400 million people speak this language. 400 millions. Like there are 22, I repeat, there are 22 countries, Arab countries in the Middle East. They speak in Arabic. And they are communicating in Arabic. But the most matter of sorrow that they actually, most of them, they don't actually know uh, English. They only uh, speak in Arabic. So this is why if you want to talk with them, you cannot communicate with them because they don't know English. In order to communicate with them, either you have to learn Arabic or either you have to teach them English. If you can teach them in English, they can communicate with you. Uh, in English, and if you can speak with them in Arabic, then it's fair enough. They can communicate with them. So in order to communicate with this 400 millions of people like Dubai, um, uh, Egypt, Lebanon, Libya, uh, Palestine, uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, there are 22, I forgot, most of the Arab country use, the, use their Arabic language in order to communicate. So you have the plenty of opportunity to to communicate with them because as we are living in the global as well we have to think like globally not locally where if you are think like locally it means like you are in the you are in limited area but as we are in globalized uh globalized uh, uh time so in order to communicate globally you have to learn the global language so Arabic language is one kind of global language that can be benefit you in your future if you want to talk about, if you want to communicate in Arabic language. As I told you, maybe I have expressed this Arabic is a bridge language. If you can learn this language, may, so many of languages can be open. The doors can be open to learn a new language. So this is why it is called a bridge language. And also it will like, it will make you different. It will like, it will make you unique than others. Think about it. In 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 around you, um, it's rare to find someone who is, is speaking in Arabic. Uh, this is how you are talking in Arabic. Around you, you cannot get any people. So if you can learn Arabic, that makes you unique. That makes you different. People will care about you. Oh my goodness, what? You, you are speaking Arabic, so that means you, you are speaking the language of Prophet. That means you are speaking the language of Quran. That means you are speaking the uh, fifth most spoken language. People will value you. Oh my goodness, it's unique. It will make you personally, uh, you can make personal branding with it. If you have the dream, bigger dream, you would obviously need personal branding as you are doing, as you're working yourself. Everyone is working yourself. Uh, to improve yourself, right? So in order to improve yourself, you have to think globally. 
uh, you have to communicate with global people. Like I'm from Bangladesh, you're from Indonesia. I'm, just, I'm communicating with you. You are listening to me. That means you are also communicating with me. You are communicating with global people. Oh my goodness. This is why in the, in the beginning of meeting, I told you, you guys are awesome. You guys are engaging. You can do something in near future. I don't know what can you do, but you will do definitely, inshallah, if Allah wants, Allah willing. Yeah, that's the thing. If you are if you are listening, if you are benefiting, you can just simply chat on the chat box. That is engaging. I really like engaging. When I post on Instagram, Facebook, people comment an inbox that in motivates me and then I make another video again. Something like that. <laughs> Okay. If I can go to the next slides, that actually comes academic pursuits. Academic pursuits. Oh my goodness. This is really important for me. For me, first of all, for me and then for you. Uh, actually, I have a big dream to study abroad. Like I, I want to study in, uh, I'm a student. Still, I'm a student. I'm just 21. And I'm like, maybe I am younger than you. Many of you, I'm younger than you. I can be, uh, and I'm a student. I'm just 21. I have a big dream to study abroad in Arabic language, or uh, I want to study in Medina University or Al-Azhar in Egypt, that is most famous. And also it can be uh, good for study in Malaysia. Uh, so in order to study abroad, that comes academic pursuits. That's what I want to mention now. Uh, actually, it is, uh, I heard yesterday that Indonesian people, Indonesian students really like to study abroad, like whoever religious, whoever pious uh, wants to study abroad in Arabic language or the uh, great university, best university in the world uh, in Arabic sites. So they can actually uh, get full scholarship. And to get full scholarship, in, uh, to get scholarship, in order, in order to get the scholarship, you have to actually know the Arabic language, like in English. If you want to go out, so if you want to study in Canada, America, Australia, you have to learn the uh, IELTS, that is international uh, system of taking exam in English. But in Arabic, uh, if you want to go to a study ab abroad, like Saudi Arabia, if you if you know Arabic language, if you can speak in Arabic, that will be ex that will be bonus for you. And you will not get stuck in uh, in uh, in uh, where you when, when you will start living there. So in order to get scholarship, it is also a very good opportunities to learn Arabic language that I believe and that I actually I'm working on it. Inshallah, if I can do it, then then that will be an example for everyone. Uh, I want you guys to pray for me for that, and I will uh, pray for you, Inshallah, for so you can do something in your future. Uh, with this with this part of Arabic language or something like that and it also comes um, like uh, you can study with uh, uh, you can choose either a language you can either choose a linguistic subject you can choose either uh, uh, the subjects related to Arabic or if it, actually when you was, uh, when you was, uh, admit to any any abroad, uh, any abroad universities, uh, best universities. Actually, you have to uh, go through with the communication of Arabic language because because the scholars actually speak in Arabic. Uh, will give you the lecture in Arabic if you go to abroad to study abroad. Uh, so for example, Madin Arabic. They will uh, the teacher of Madin Arabic, uh, Madin University. They will speak it Arabic language to you, not English. I repeat, no English there, only Arabic language. So this is why in academic pursuits, in academic section, uh, this is really um, obligation. I can say obligation to learn Arabic language when it comes to study abroad for Arabic language or for uh, study in like modern university or Al-Azhar University, something like that, that can be helpful for you. Uh, okay, I just want to make it so simple. When it comes to career opportunities, it is like 
if I can tell you career, I, 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 I told you about the understanding Quran. I told you about the uh, academic pursuit, opportunities of communication. But when it comes to actually uh, career, uh, people actually in our countries don't really like, uh, don't really feel the Arabic language, how valuable Arabic language is. I don't know how in Indonesia, how in any other countries, but I in our country, people think that it's like a religious language. So people don't give value. But when it comes to career, if I, if I want to be honest, honestly, I can say your career will be up. Like in the Middle East, there are 22 countries in the Middle East, in the world, and they are like dominating the world by their natural resources and assets, golds, and uh, like natural resources in the Middle East is vast, is like completely um, a blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that put in the Middle East natural resources that is how the middle east countries are dominating people are people of our country they are getting to the middle east country uh, to work to work there uh, to in, from india from pakistan from asia we are going to the middle east in order to work with like uh, dubai like uh, uh, and uh, uh, we are going to the bahrain we are going to the qatar oh my goodness qatar is uh, kuwait the the currency of Kuwait is is bigger than the dollars. Dollar is like one dollar, but Kuwait is like three dollars. One dinar is like three dollars. So it's much valuable than dollars than the America's currency. So you cannot imagine how Middle East actually uh, countries they are dominating the world. And when you want to go to the Middle East country, if you don't know Arabic, you will have to you will have to have the problems about communicating with them. If you are, actually, when it comes to communication, without communication, you cannot get a good job. Without communication, you cannot actually express yourself. Uh, in the interview, if someone asks you, uh, what's your, what's you what, what you can do, what's your ability, what you are expertise, you, uh, you can just say a simple words, but not you, you cannot express yourself in Arabic. They will ask you in Arabic. But English, they can sometimes uh, ask you in English, but most of the Middle East countries, people speak in Arabic language. Uh, as I am working in Arabic language, I get a lot of uh, messages from, in my WhatsApp. They, uh, they, uh, they go, went to the, to the Middle East country and then they say, oh my goodness, they all of the people are speaking here in Arabic, but I cannot speak in Arabic. So what should I do now? And then uh, they want to learn in Arabic to me. I, 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 and there is a little confusion. I'm coming with the next part. Uh, please be patient. That is coming. Interesting point. And inshallah, if you can finish this meeting perfectly, I will try to play a game with you if you want to. Okay. Uh, as I told you, in, in, in the Middle East countries, like, uh, Dubai is dominating. Saudi Arabia people are going to the to going there to work. Uh, people are going to work in Dubai. Dubai is like the center of business. You can't imagine the people of America, the people of Canada, the people of Australia, uh, the the Western culture coming to the Dubai to the Middle East in order to create a business. And this is why it's the center of business. So in order to work, in order to uh, think, if you want, if you're thinking about your career, don't think that Arabic language is less than what you are thinking. It's like, uh, it's like very important, like English. No, uh, no comparison, no comparison about Arabic language. It is like dominating to the world right now. And inshallah, for the next two or three years, for the next or uh, three, three to five years, who is speaking in Arabic will get a lots of jobs in in online in uh, in physically physically nowadays physically is uh, much but uh, as as we are getting adapting with the online like Zoom we are we are doing Zoom and I also personally do a job through through online not physically 
uh, from America, I do a, a job like as a community manager, I am working at home. So you can see the world is now going through the metaverse. I don't know if you have heard about metaverse, it is wave three. Uh, we are getting into the wave three metaverse and we will communicate in the uh, in online. Everything we will communicate in online so soon. So in the next five to three to five years, uh, we will uh, they will get a lots of benefits, lots of opportunity, job opportunities uh, in the Middle East or in the worldwide. And at home, you can do a job if you are seeking. So that's the point of career opportunity. I ju I'm just making it simple and so short. Not I'm not making it bigger so that you can you, you don't get bored. I just wanted to make it short. Thank you so much for commenting. Amazing topic. Okay. And then I can come with Oh. Good. That's a good point I have ever made in this in this presentation, which is classical and dialects. You might have uh, thinking what is classical and what is dialects. Let me clear you. The language of, okay, I can show you. Okay. Oh, you can see? The book is written in Arabic. I think it's middle. Okay. The book in the written language, the Arabic language is written in book and and written in the Quran, holy book, and um, in television, Al Jazeera. You might have heard it, heard of it, international media. Al Jazeera, a newspaper that is formal like interview if if you go to the interview your boss is asking you cannot say you cannot use your local language you have to use formal language like how are you how are you doing like that is formal language so classical language is like formal language if I, if you if you don't get it i'm explaining it again classical language is like formal it's Allah, Allah revealed the Quran in Arabic language in classical, formal, not any local language. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi was speaking in classical language, not local language. But our Prophet can understand local language, but he was he, his language was beautiful. It's because he was speaking in classical language, like the language of Quran. And the language of Quran is classical language. And there is a confusion. People uh, don't understand. This is why I'm, I'm making it exp I'm making it clear to this meeting. And if you can, if you guys are uh, recording this meeting, maybe this meeting will be helpful for the people who will be watching uh, for the for the future, inshallah. Because nobody ac actually explained this to you. Um, uh, yeah, that's classical. In newspaper, Al Jazeera, uh, they start with uh, classical. And uh, newspaper, they use classical language. And uh, books written, as I showed you, those are classical, not any local language. So these are classical. Hope you get understand it, uh, I think. And then it comes dialects. Dialects, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Dialects, actually, um, people speak it. Like spoken language is dialect. Like if you go to Saudi Arabia, uh, you have to speak, you have to speak uh, the Saudi dialect. It is called Saudi dialects. And if you go to, you know, like uh, uh, Egypt, you have to speak with Egyptian, like Egyptian dialects. If you go to, like uh, in Lebanon, Libya, Palestine, different countries have different dialects. They, this is these are the spoken language. Hope you are getting understand it. I'm not making it difficult. So, and classical is formal and uh, dialects is not formal, informal, like local language. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? In language, we use, hey, what's up? But in interview, we cannot say, hey, what's up? It's rude. So local language is like that, dialects. It's different than classical. Like, 
لا مشكلة no, no problem how can I say no problem in Arabic لا مشكلة in classical way but if you go to the Egypt Egyptian people will say مش مشكلة oh my goodness مش مشكلة مش is different language than classical it's totally different so this is why if you go to any country and they speak to you you cannot understand any of thing and this is the most confusion thing people ask me and I have to explain it again and again and again. Okay, now it's come. What should you prefer? And why should you prefer? Do you uh, prefer classical? Or do you prefer like dialects, like Saudi dialects, Egyptian dialects? Although Egyptian dialects is really uh, doing great in the movies, movie series in if you want to watch a movie egyptian language used in movies most of the time because uh 20 22 percent people of egypt is arab people and uh, most of the arab people lives in egypt so if you can learn egypt language egyptian dialects it's good for you to uh, understand movies to communicate with them to communicate with other country a little bit same but if you want to choose uh, if you want to pick one thing, what should you pick? Classical or or a dialects? Okay, let me explain you. If you are non-native, like I am non-native, I am not native Arabic speaker. I don't I don't born in Saudi Arabia. I don't born in Egyptian, but I learn it by uh, reading kitabs, uh, reading books. So I learn the classical language, not any dialects. I can understand the Quran, the language of Quran. I can understand the language of books in written in Arabic language. I cannot understand dialects. So this is the problem. If you if you if you are non-native, if you are non-native, you have to choose classical language. And if if your intention is to understand Quran, understand the books, understand the news newspaper, you can choose classical language. And if you want to work somewhere, if you want to live in any specific country, actually you have to, actually you have to uh, learn the that dialects where you are living. If if you are living in Saudi, just go uh, and uh, find a teacher uh, who is teaching Saudi dialects, like uh, Saudi dialect, yeah. And if you if you want to live in Egypt for more than five years, two years, ten years, you are working there. I don't I don't prefer you to learn classical then go learn Egyptian language because you have to speak it you don't have to learn it you have to speak it you have to communicate with it so dialects is uh, important in that case if you want to go to the Palestine you want to work there you want to go to the Dubai you want to work there you have to learn the Dubai accents Dubai dialects it's a little bit different like uh, uh we say we say uh, for example, in classical, we say, "Arifu, uh, la arifu." I don't know, la arifu. I don't know, but uh, Dubai people will say, "Barif, barif." Don't know. It means they make it shorter. Dialects make it shorter so that they can easily uh, communicate with them. I say, "La arifu," with a longer, and they say, "Barif." Finished. And that's how actually dialects works. If you want to live there, learn, choose the dialect. If you want to understand Quran, if you understand the books, if you understand and the deep knowledge, like if you're native, non-native, I, I hope you can choose classical language. It is also called modern standard Arabic. Modern for M, standard for S, Arabic for A, modern standard Arabic. That's how it actually works. Let's see what we have now. Oh, we have finished Q and A session. It's time to Q and A session. Okay, the door, uh, the uh, the floor is open to everyone. If you have any question, uh, I'm requesting my host and the co-host. Uh, if if you can help me with it, uh, if someone has any question about my uh, my conversation about if if anything you can ask, feel free to ask me. I am really literally friendly to you, and I will be ha happy to know your answer. I'll try to give. Try my best to answer. 
Oke. Okay. Wow, well, Masya Allah, great presentation from Coach Sihab. Thank you so much for delivering such explanation today, Coach Sihab. Let's give a applause special to our speaker, Coach Sihab. Oke. Okay. Now, we are coming to our last session for Q&A. We have 30 minutes for asking questions to teacher Sihab. And dear participants, don't forget we will have an analyst on the last 10 minutes. So make sure you all you are still with us till the end. And I want to remind, uh, we are coming to our last session. So any questions for teacher to have no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if every anyone has any question, please let me know. You can also uh, uh, make a chat. You can use the chat box. I am watching the chat. If you don't want to speak. Okay. Uh, can I ask to you, teacher, to help? Yeah. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yes. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum. Mm -hmm. Talking about, about uh, talking about Arabic language. Uh, my question is. Uh, I am getting a little voice from you. Uh, uh, my host. Can you make it clear a little bit? Why? Can I? Can I? Um. Okay, somebody maybe made a question. Yes, my question is, what personal growth can you come Okay, one by one, one by one. Oh, there is a question. My question is, what what? Oh. How was your day, participants? Before we start, let's open with our program. One teacher, one new and Oh, somebody a uh, message. Uh, can I read it? Mister, like we want, we know that when we read Quran, we need to be careful about the speed, etc. It is also we must do when speaking Arabic for daily conversation. Okay, that uh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know who asked this question, but I appreciate this question so much. Actually, when you and when you want to. Uh, okay, let me clear it to you. When you want to read Quran, you are actually uh, taking care of the tazvid. If your tazvid is good or right, uh, you are correcting or not. Tazvid is super important. If you make a little change in tazvid, that actually changes the word in Arabic language. It's not like any other language. It's a very deep knowledge and rich language. So if you, if you, uh, for example, <laughs> it's it's a little bit funny. Kolbun means heart. Heart. Our heart is kolbun. But when you uh, mistakenly say kalbun, that means actually dog. Go, go. Like that. Dog. So if you change, make change the sounds, it changes the meaning. So it's really important in Tazweed while, speak, while reading Quran. But when conversation, you always, uh, in classical, you have to uh yeah go through with the grammatical parts as a non-native we have to learn the grammar uh, and to speak it you have to practice you have to speak uh, this language to to the people like uh, as much as you can speak it you have the inertia on your tongue as much as you know something but if you can uh, revise it again and again and again 
So that actually uh, overcome your inertia from your mouth so you can speak it then. Inshallah, you can speak it by practicing, by the following the rules of grammatical parts. And that comes uh, later. But today's topic is about why should we actually learn the Arabic language? I hope you get uh, the information that I wanted to tell you, that wa what I wanted to share with you. Hope you get it. Is there any question? Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, what say how I want to ask question. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> how to learn Arabic uh, elfly? How to learn Arabic? Elfly. What is <clears throat> that? Can you chat message? Uh, okay. Come, 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 come. How to learn Arabic easily? Okay, can you make it more specifically? Do you want to learn Arabic speaking or just learning? Uh, yes, speaking and yes, speaking. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. Many people ask this question and hope many people will get benefit with this question. Okay, how to learn Arabic easily? First of all, you have to uh, start the Arabic. Uh, you have to start learning. If you can't start, you will not actually learning. So first of all, you have to have the intention. Maybe many people just want, yeah, I want to learn it. I want to speak it. But after some days, they get demotivated and they just give up. So first of all, you have to uh, uh, make yourself. You have to make yourself to uh, learn Arabic. Until I learn it, I won't give up. This is the intention you have to have, first of all. And then after that, you have to look for Obviously, you have to look for books, Arabic books and Arabic scholars who actually knows, who actually uh, is experience of it. So first of all, if you can communicate with the scholars and everyone nowadays in globalization, it's easy to find scholars, uh, Arabic teachers. You have to find a, a teacher because Arabic is not that language that you can like, you can only for learn from Arabic, uh, Arabic books. You have to uh, have a... a uh, honestly a teacher without teachers uh, it's like it's like you you are in the ocean you cannot get understand uh, any of things in arabic language and to understand uh, to start your journey you can follow uh, it is called surf in arabic language surf i repeat surf and nahwu which is uh, nahwu means grammar you have to um, learn grammar and then Surf is morphology because Arabic language the verb change uh, in one in in one sentences you in one by one words you can express thousands of words in Arabic language so this is why you have to learn the surf which is morphology and you have to learn the grammar in order to uh, make it like uh, like uh, it is correcting you are writing correctly you are speaking correctly you have to learn the nahu which is called Arabic grammar and after the learning the and learning the grammar and the nahu you have to have a teacher this is the starting and then when you start it will become easier for you to learn Arabic okay thank you coach for the answer shukran so what's next Okay, the participants, any questions for teacher Sihab? No? How many okay. times we have, dear host? Okay, if the reason I I want to ask to teacher Sihab. Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, my 
My question is, what personal growth can come from mastering the complexities of the Arabic language? What comes com complex uh, in Arabic language? What personal growth can come from mastering the complexities of the Arabic language? Okay, I will I will answer your question. Uh, I think if you can message me, that can be better. And somebody ask question, what is the common mistake that the Arabic learner did? What is the major difference between English and Arabic? Okay, that's a uh, great question I got. Uh, who is the who is the question? Who made this question? Can I know his name? I just want to thank him. Triana Hi. Makassar, Indonesia. Thank you so much for this question. Okay, actually, uh, common mistake. Common mistake is that they actually try to translate the language. They trans they try to translate the Arabic language from uh, from Arabic language to any other language. Like uh, you are reading Quran and then you are try trying to translate in English. Like Bismillah Rahman Rahim, as I told you, uh, it, 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 you are you are uh, making a translation in the name of Allah. So where where is then in the uh, I'm starting. So there is there is uh, like lackings in when you translate it. So you have to understand the it, uh, Arabic language itself. And what is the difference between English and Arabic? Okay, this is super interesting. I don't want to I, I don't want to make uh, disrespect to any other language. Just I want to compare it. Um, for example, in English, you is you, but in Arabic you have to take care whether you are talking to boy or talking to girl. Like if you want to talk to a girl, a boy, then you have to say angta. If you want to say girl, you, you have to say angti. So see, here's the difference. In Arabic language, Arabic language is actually giving the respect the boy, the girls. English is not giving the respect to boy or girl specifically, but Arabic language is giving the respect that you are boy. You have to specify it something like uh, that that has specific word uh, uh, for you for the boys specific words for girls so this is how arabic language actually give the respect to the uh, genders and if you are two whether you boy or girl in english you can say you you can express but in english you can you have to say angtuma because you are two if you are more than two you can say you in English. It, 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 it is uh, easy and it is like no problem. You. You guys are awesome. Like you. But in, in, in Arabic, you can say that. If you are more than two people, more than two person, and you are boys, then you have to say angtum. And if there is more than uh, three people, three persons, like uh, they are girls, we have to say a different ways, like Antunna. You all of you are girls, Antunna. So this is how Arabic language actually uh, giving the respect. People think it, it's difficult, but I think it's the most, uh, most uh, easier and wide. You can express yourself much better than English in Arabic language. You can express yourself in, in Arabic than English or than any other language. This is why it's a rich language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, choose this language in the Quran so that we can understand. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a verse in Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we reveal Quran so that you can understand. So that you can understand. So that you can uh, uh, you can understand it. So this is the reason that the, Quran, the, the Arabic language is written in Quran. It's super easy super uh, super wide super explanation uh, and giving respect everything just amazing until you until you learn it you can imagine how beautiful language is it okay thank you so much for this question and and dear host did you write the question in the chat box i am comfortable in reading the chat box Okay, I can give the love reaction. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, in French, they have gender. In Arabic, also have gender classification. Whether you are talking to a boy, uh, you have to talk uh, in a boy's part. Like, Kaifa Haluka, how are you? Kaifa uh, Haluka. Uh, but when you say, when you speak to a girl, you have to say Kaifa Haluki. Ka, ki. Difference. Okay, uh, what next, dear host? Uh, coach, excuse me, I want to ask <clears throat> how to overcome when learning Arabic we feel bored? How to? How to overcome when learning Arabic we, we feel bored? <clears throat> When we feel feel bored when learning Arabic, yes. Oh, actually, it depends on the various person. If uh, if you talked about me, I don't get bored anymore because it's like addiction. Learning a language is like addiction, and when it's come to Arabic, and it's a part of our religion, part of our Islam, so I don't get bored anymore. I just um, whenever I get free time, I just open book. and learning uh, i just bought i just buy new books where, wherever i get i just buy new books when, whenever i get money i just go to the shop and then buy new books and then learn it i don't get bored but um uh, some people who just want to learn i want to learn it and then after learn some few days they get bored it's because they actually they actually not getting uh not getting the environment this can be a reason Uh, that they are getting feel bored or something. They are not getting the uh, motivation to learn it. So this is the reason they are not the environment. But for me, uh, I am a content creator. So I have environment. I have the inspiration. People are comment. People inspires me. So I get the inspiration. But for a general people, they need to go through a community. Community. Yeah. If you want to learn Arabic language, you have to go to a community like. Uh, if you are using social media, you have to join that types of groups that actually teaching Arabic. You have to join, you have to like, you have to comment in Arabic. Uh, uh, you have to join in Telegram groups that is Arabic. Facebook groups has Arabic. Uh, Instagram communities, broadcast channels, everything you have to make it like Arabic environment. When your environment is as Arabic, then you can easy, uh, you will not distract from your learning and you will not get demotivated in future inshallah i i believe it okay thank you coach okay anyone want to ask another question okay maybe someone made a question can you read for me host Okay, uh, the question is, how can learning Arabic contribute to fostering cross or cultural understanding and global harmony? Okay, how can, how can learning Arabic contribute to fostering? Uh, actually, uh, I apologize, my vocabulary is a little bit down. What is What do you mean by fostering cross culture? I don't get it. But I think I can understand your question. How can learning Arabic contribute? Okay, uh, through the con through the presentation, I tried to make it exp uh, explain. But Arabic language can be contributed in various uh, various places. In uh, in job wise, in uh, literature wise, in studying Arabic. Teaching, uh, teaching kids, our next generation, uh, those are most important to us. Our next generation, if you're not uh, contributing Arabic language, if you're not uh, trying to contribute, if you're not trying to learn Arabic language, and if you're not uh, actually uh, didn't care about Arabic language, so what would be our next generation? 
they don't understand what is written in Quran. What is, uh, they don't get uh, motivation because it's not working. People are not working. So oh, how Arabic language can be contributed if we don't work? We have to go. We have to work on it. First of all, we have to learn it. Without learning it, without learning it, we cannot actually uh, spread the language. So first of all, we have to make make ourselves first, and then after learning, if don't uh, don't know thyself, Socrates says, know thyself to build the world. If you want to build the world, know thyself, know the language first, know the Arabic. Then you can spread the language. You can contribute to the Arabic. Without you. Nobody is contributing. And in globally, if you are contributing with Arabic language, oh my goodness, people are really, people will, uh, the next generation will be benefited by uh, by our deeds if we can, if, 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 if our plan works actually. They, they, can, uh, they can be uh, knowledgeable people. That's the biggest uh, contribution that I believe. You understand, host? Thank you. Okay. What next? Oh my goodness. 20 people is still watching how they are engaging. Okay, anyone want to ask another question? Oh, okay. Uh Looks like nothing. Let's get to the closing season. Oh, did you write it? In the comment box? Uh, no, nothing. You can, you can write a comment. I mean, you can write a message in the comment, in the chat box. It, it's it's comfortable for me. Dear host, can you let me know how many times we have? Hello. If you if you don't have any question left, okay, you can ask me later. But can we go to a little bit playing something? Can we play a game like? Okay. Okay. Okay, so yeah. I I need some I need the um, who wants to participate? I just need them to play with. One, two, three, p four people is good. It can be good. Who wants okay. to participate? Do you want to participate, host? Okay, there seems to be no not question. Okay, okay. Let's go to the closing season. No, 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 no. Actually, uh, Coach Hebo wants to play the game. Yes, I want to play a game. Ah, oh, play the game. game. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Okay, who wants to play this game? Uh, okay, let me tell you what is the procedure of playing game, which is uh, there are 20, as I mentioned you, there are 22 Arab countries in the world. I will show you the flags of Arab countries and you have to tell the names of Arab countries. But be true to yourself, you cannot Google online. Okay? And then who wants to participate? Just raise your hand or um, yeah, we can play if you want to play. I can, I, I have a presentation sheet. So how many there wants to play? Okay, one, two. 
two people are ready. Mr. Baku, once do you want to play this game? <laughs> yeah, of course, actually, but uh, I don't know how to the rules. No problem. I will everything I will tell you. Uh, process. I will tell you. Okay. But it, it's it's super easy. I will give you option. No problem. It's okay. like asking question, but I'm giving. I will give you options so that you can give the answer. Okay. Okay. So you, the two hosts, and so they are three. And who else want to play this game? I want to know. The host. Uh, host Raisha, Hilma, and uh, uh, Miss Three. Mm, okay, so Miss mm, Three. Anna. Okay, let's start. Let's start. If you know the answer, you can raise your hand or chat in the chat box. You can message, uh, so that I can let you say the answer. Okay, I am sharing the screen. Okay, this is the actually the rules is simple. This game is so simple. There there would be a flag, the picture of flag, and uh, you and obviously these are from Middle East countries flag, Arab countries flag. So I just want to know how many of people you 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 uh, actually care about Arab countries uh, by this game. And also there is no problem if you if you make mistake if you make mistake. I have a candy for you. I bought a candy. Oh, if you make mistake, I can give you this. Can you see? I can give you this candy. And if you if you can answer the question, I can give you this. I mean, happy. I'm super happy. And then let's start. This is the flag of Arab countries. You have to tell me. Which, what is the name of this flag? If you know the answer, raise your hand or you can use the chat box. If you know the flag names, you cannot Google it. Oh, you can I Google can, I can answer. Okay, Mr. Baku, tell me, what is the flag name? Do you need options? You mean like the names of the country? Yes, country name. Oh, if I am not wrong, comes from a uh, 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 Yemen. Oh, so close. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, sorry. There are two stars. And you see Arab countries, most of the Arab countries flag is like red color on top of it and then middle, white and then black. And the difference is the a logo like two stars which country have two stars which country okay okay ilma ilma hasana tell me what is the flag name is this surya surya you mean syria yes Yes, that's Syria. the Syria. That's the Syria. Yeah, Syria. So, yes. I forgot to tell you guys. Uh if you um I I will ask you 10 questions and I am marking who will give who will give the best answer. I mean the who can give the uh, as much as the possible right answer can can have the gift. from me and is good for learning Arabic I can give you free of cost if you can uh, say the answers perfectly so the first one Ilma got one point Okay, Mr. Baku, no, no problem. Don't need to be Ori. Inshallah, you can <laughs> next time. <laughs> okay. Uh, go to the next one. So what is the answer of this? Syria. Okay. Next question. 
this is the flag. You have to tell me what is the flag name of this. And it is also from Arab countries, Middle East countries. I think nobody wants to see or to browse the uh, internet, yes? Hello? What? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, can I you can hear me? you. Yeah, I think uh, nobody wants to see or uh browsing on the google yes oh no no it's not possible because it's only flag they okay, cannot okay. browse it but i said to be honest everyone should be honest oh united arab ilma said united arab If anyone wants to agree with Ilma, is it United States, United Arab Emirates or something else? If you if you agree with, with her, it can also be a point. So should I take the answer? Okay, someone is messaging. Let's see. What is the answer? Oh, United Arab Emirates. Emma is doing really great. Mashallah. Next question. What is this flag? I know that. No, Sarbaco, say again. No stars. Yemen. Yemen. Yes. Let's see. What is the answer? Do you want to say something? Anybody else? Mr. Baco said that it is Yemen. Do you guys agree with it? Is it Yemen or any other country? Five seconds. I will count five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's see the answer. Oh, it's Yemen. Okay, finally. Oh, did you know that? Mashallah. Yeah, you got number one. Ilma agree with it. Ilma got three points. Intelligence. Okay, we love Yemen. They are so good. Um, Next question. Oh, this is quite similar. I hope you can. What is the flag name is this? Okay, what's that? <laughs> uh, yeah, quite challenging. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. I just think first. Uh, Leban Lebanon? Uh, Lebanon. Who is Lebanon? agree with Lebanon? Oh, no, no, yes, that's right, Jordan. That's right. Who said in the chat box? What is the name? Can you mention? H. It is written H only. I don't know what is her name, but I should pick the answer from the chat box. Who said before you, Mr. Baku? Sorry. <laughs> okay, you are getting 1.8. I don't know your name, but if you can win, I will let you know. Next right. question. Oh, uh, I should. We should know this. What is the flag name of this? What is the answer? Hey, answer, uncle, come. Oh, Jordan. It's Jordan. Oh, nice. Oh, one another thing I need. I need to mention here. If you want to study Arabic, Jordan is a beautiful place. Jordan is the place of learning Arabic. People are getting graduate from Jordan. Yeah. 
Remember the flag. Next question. Oh, so easy. This one. Raise your hand fast. Wow. Easy for you, but difficult for us. No, it's like I can give you a clue. Uh, this country, uh, this country in the last uh, football tournament, uh, World Club, World Cup, they are about to win the champion. Ah, I mean, I think I agree with Raisa, you got it? Morocco. Oh, um, host Raisa, do you uh, uh, agree with it? Yeah, Morocco. Yes, it's own. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Morocco. Morocco. Great job. Uh, Mohamed Salah, do you know him? Yeah. I know. Oh, Mohamed Salah is from Egypt. I forgot. But Morocco was uh, did really good in the past World Cup. Okay. So, Mr. Bako, good job. Your point is four. Wow, great. Great competition. But if it were many people, it was very good. It will. Oh, this one. I think every Muslim should know this. Palestina. What? Palestina. Wow. Palestine. Mashallah, mashallah. I really liked it. So both all of you are getting the point. Yeah, Palestine is our brother. Our, our brotherhood, our blood. Yes. Palestine. Super, super, super. Next. Ah. Oh, quite similar. Quite similar. Uh, 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 Lebanon? Mm -hmm. This right. one? Le Lebanon? I think... Quite? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Who Very said? No roll. Who said quite? No roll, no roll, no roll. Uh, quite? No said quite? No roll. Yeah. I, yeah, I think quite. No problem. I said uh, no. Don't fear about making mistake. I like make, making mistake. If you make mistake, I'll give it to you. This. And let's see. What is this? See? It's quiet. I told you guys, no, don't fear. Don't scare about making mistake. But it's right, unfortunately. So you are getting, Nurul, you are getting this from me. I'm so happy. Oh. Okay, that's that was so quite challenging, but Nurul did it. Nurul are getting two points. <laughs> okay. Oh, this one. Wow, what's that? <laughs> no browsing, yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. No browsing. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's that? <laughs> oh, can't you see, guys? This is still like uh, Arabic language. What's clue? Uh, yeah, it's Arab country. It's from Arab country. What's that? Do, uh, do you need any clue? Yep. Okay. If you need clue, okay. Hmm. Ah, it's like milk. Uh, in Arabic, and ah. in Arabic we say milk. The Arabic uh, milk. O M A N. Oman. I think, yeah, I think that. Hey, no, no. So, okay. so uh, I have a friend in there. Whoa. Let's see. It's Lebanon. Lebanon! 
Since I always I talk Oh my it. god. <laughs> okay. okay. You're very good for trying. Oh, this one. Like Wow. Boss. Arab country. From Arab country. Arab country. No browsing, please. Please give <laughs> uh, what? It start with L. It start with L. Start with L. Yes, L. Uh, mm -hmm. No, already. Libya. Libya. Oh, oh my goodness! It's right. It's right. Libya. Libya. Clap for clap for clap for oh. Nuru. Everyone. This one was toughest one. How oh really? Uh, yes. What, what do you think it. about what do you think about Libya country? Libya country? Yes. Yeah, it's like uh, it's uh, Libya is good. Some some countries are uh, some cities are so beautiful, but most of the areas are like desert and um, poor people live there most of the people are poor but they are muslim this is yeah, the, because, because, and they speak in arabic yeah because you know a lot of uh, uh indonesian people those come there's to learn uh, uh like a university in libya oh yeah, yeah we have like one we have like one like popular popular ustad Popular teachers here, so like Ustad mm -hmm. Adi Hidayat is or graduate in Libya. Okay, okay. Thank you. And uh, okay. I hope you know this. My goodness. So familiar. Is it Qatar? Qatar. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, Qatar. Who said? Nurul. Nurul, yes. Nurul is dominating the uh the oh, no no not, not me. Oh who's who said? I'm Ardesa. Oh I'm Ardesa. Ardesa. Okay. Where were you so far? I was looking for you. Ardesa. What? Okay, next. Oh our heart. Ah. <laughs> Saudi Everyone Arabia. say, what is the flag? Saudi Arabia. Everyone say. Saudi Arabia. Yes. That's the game of today. And those of you guys participate in this game is getting a gift from me, which is an Arabic PDF that can be helpful for you as a beginner. To start with, um, I think this meeting also help you to, to in to understand why you actually should learn Arabic language, and what is why it is so much important for our next generation, and we shouldn't keep uh, just silent. We shouldn't keep just uh, not learning it. We just start. We we should start it. Uh, whatever we have, just we have to start it, and uh, by this game. We actually tried to uh, uh, see the flags of Arabic countries. There are 22 flags, but I choose only 10 flags. Hope you get realized of it. And inshallah, uh, uh, um, if you if the host and co-host can help me uh, to pass the PDF, I just need uh, mails so that I can give the PDFs to whoever wants, not to everyone. Whoever wants, make sure that have interest in Arabic language, then uh, I can give it to her uh, because the uh, PDF, I, I don't share anyone. So who have actually interested learning Arabic and by the by this meeting, I will be happy to know by this meeting, if you if anyone get inspiration about learning Arabic language and uh, hope you also get the inspiration to learn English as well, because uh, without English, you cannot. I cannot communicate with you. You cannot understand me. So both language is so uh, important. So this is why I believe the meeting 
uh, Mr. Baku, what is the uh, program was, what is the name of this program? Uh, International? International English and Arabic Training Class, Batch 5. Okay, I, I believe that uh, in today's meeting, International Arabic and English comes true. I mean, perfectly closed. I mean, uh, yeah, you can get Arabic inspiration. You can get the English inspiration. If you watch this video, if you can record it, uh, inshallah, it will help you. By this uh, international Arabic and English training class, batch five, you will uh, hope you learned it. And inshallah, uh, wish you best, all of you, for you. So, so you can do something really good. And I can proud of you. So I can tell that, you were in this meeting and you did you did something well. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's it. And pray for me. Keep me in your duas, everyone. And if if you have anything to tell me, I'm here. Uh, in five minutes, inshallah, I will. Stay five minutes. <laughs>